interior Te restaurant later that night. At a table strewn with empty champagne bottles, Al devours his food. Alongside Al, calmly, Cook two puffs on a cigarette, then sips from his champagne glass. Al wipes the plate with his finger as Cook two refreshes both their glasses with more bubbly. He then places a piece of bread near Al. Here's to you. Al smiles. No. No. Wait. He gets into Al's face. His smile disappears. To us. Clink. Al wipes the plate with his index finger. Stops. Takes a piece of bread and uses it to finish the mopping operation. Thank you, Mr. Cocteau. Cocteau slips his hand on Al's leg. Jean. Al, tactfully, removes Cocteau's hand. Thank you, Jean. Cocteau smiles. Raises his glass. Another toast to true friends. Drinks are downed. They're as wet as fish. Al smashes his glass against the floor. They giggle. Heads turn. The waiter comes to the table. Cocteau signals to the waiter that all is fine. Al holds the empty bottle upside down. Cocteau snatches it, raises it. A garçon? One more? He looks around at the staring faces, then to Al, who's now on his feet, loosening his shoulders, cracking his neck. Ah, the world champion has returned to the ring. Al chuckles as he poses in a fighting stance. Oh dear, the champ is back. Al throws punches into the air. Coctu relishes the moment. Once a champ, always a champ. Coctu flips the chair around, leans into its backside, turns the empty bottle into a mic. Al stares at him. Panama Al Brown, the ex-bantamweight world champion. The elongated Panamanian with a mule's thunder in his right hand, undefeated for more than five years. Never knocked out, never kissed the canvas. Panama Brown returns to the ring. Al smiles and bobs and weaves, throws hooks, jabs, uppercuts as the shocked, snotty clientele look on. Panama attacks Shangali, who tries to clinch with the champ. Al digs into his side with a vicious left. Shangali is hurt. Yes, he is hurt. Al nears a table where he knocks a guy's hat off his head. Patrons flee for their lives. He throws into the air a low left hook, then a high one. The champ has him on the ropes. Panama throws another left, and another, and another. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a thing of beauty to see this Negro, a true poet of the ring. Two waiters sneak up from behind. Al turns, points his menacing fists at them. Yes, yes, this beautiful Latin American specimen of the ring is now going up against Kid Francis and battling Batalino, who have jumped in to save Shangali from the thrashing of his life. The two waiters back off as Al prances after them, boxing his way through the business. Everyone scatters. It's no use. Panama is unstoppable. He is a tropical hurricane from South America. As Al exits into the street, Cocteau jumps to his feet. All eyes and ears are on Cocteau. Who will stop this black man from regaining his title? No one! Not even God himself! With that... Cocteau exits, then returns. He downs a patron's drink, leaves some francs, exits. The waiters run to the door. Imbeciles. The nervous patrons stare out the window. Exterior, brick building, night. Cocteau's abode is on the last floor of the three-story building. Interior, living room, Cocteau's apartment, night. Pop goes the cork of a foaming bottle of champagne. Al is in awe of the vast collection of books on the wall-to-wall shelves. A film poster, Blood of a Poet, a film by Jean Cocteau. Another poster, Infernal Machine, a play by Jean Cocteau. Several posters of poetry readings by Jean Cocteau. An immaculate space where everything is in place, even the dozens of lighted candles. You like cinema? A blank-faced Al looks at Cocteau. He puts a glass of bubbling champagne into Al's hand. Movies. Do you like movies? In New York, I went to movie houses all the time. Ah, New York, the Big Apple. The city that wants to be the Paris of America. Let's make a toast to New York. Cocteau gently sips his drink. Al gulps his down. Cocteau refills it. I love champagne. Al downs it. Cocteau refills. 
After my fights, I'd wear my silk tuxedo and drink champagne all night long. I heard you also drank before and during your fights. Al stares at him, then chuckles. I love champagne. Coctu drifts toward Al, goes for a kiss, but Al turns away, grabs his crotch instead, looks at Al straight in the eye. You are the most beautiful Negro I have ever met. Al looks away. It's late. Downs his drink, slings his knapsack over his shoulder, snaps the Panama hat on his head. Call on me. Anytime. Al nods. Exits. Cook two sighs, reaches for Al's glass. He sniffs the rim of the glass, presses his lips on it. Exterior, Pig Al Street, night. A half moon hangs over the city. Al, knapsack on his back, wearing his Panama, paces slowly down the desolate street, leaving a trail of smoke as he puffs on some reefer. Exterior, Rue del Monarque, night. Al at a tall metal gate. He gulps from a wine bottle, looks up at the property beyond him. It's an abandoned mansion with a deep front lawn full of a multitude of dried-out trees. Al digests the view with melancholic eyes. Takes another swig, sucking out the last drop of wine. Tosses the bottle over the fence. Crack! Climbs the fence and jumps onto the other side. Moves out of frame. We see a for sale sign posted on the gate. Exterior, mansion yard, continuous. Al zigzags among the dried vegetation toward the house doors. Pulls on the knobs. The doors are locked shut. Okay, guys, open the damn door. Looks around, barely keeping his eyes open. Don't forget, you fucking parasites, this is my house. He strikes the door. Thump! Rubs his face with one hand. Leans against a column. His eyes close. He snores.